Hey, welcome back to another I Care For Your Brain. We are having so much fun with our series Top 10 Brain Health Secrets. And right now I'm going to do lucky number seven. Number seven is to reduce your stress. Take seriously the impact, especially on brain health, of chronic stress. The enemy is really the chronic exposure to the stress hormones, adrenaline, cortisol. These increase our blood pressure, increase our blood glucose levels, increase inflammation, all in the service of preparing us for intense muscular action, our ability to respond to a threat to our well-being. The problem is this system, as eloquent as it is, is only intended for short periods of time. And we are intended to return to baseline, but that is not how we live at all. We are bombarded by all sorts of things, a 24-hour news cycle, demands, of work that are not clearly separated from that elusive work-life balance. We are available 24 seven on our phones. It is a feeling of constantly needing to be ready to prepare for significant action. And overall, this has a very big effect on our brain health. So that's what we're gonna talk tonight is what is the damaging effect of things like cortisol exposure over time? Well, what we know is it really affects the dendrites of the brain cells. So you've got you know, billions of brain cells in the brain and how they connect is by almost directly touching through dendrites, through these little connections. And in that little gap, we have chemical messengers that change the electrical balance between the, the inside of the cells and the outside of the cells. And this is what is the basis of information processing. And so the dendrites and the health of the dendrites winds up being incredibly important for everything that we do. So when we look at animal studies of rodents who were exposed to chronic stress, who didn't get their basic needs met, who were constantly intimidated on some level, constantly in a scarcity type environment, what we see is if we look at their brain cells underneath a microscope, they have significantly fewer dendrites than the healthy, less stressed animals. And yes, that's a mouse and we are human, but we extrapolate from that to us that there's probably a very similar process. So one of the things that you can do as you're processing a stressor is reassure your brain of two things. So we know this from very eloquent studies in social psychology. Actively telling ourselves, this is a challenge that I have the resources to manage is incredibly powerful. This is actually an evidence-based way to support chronic stress management. And this is because your brain is making the determination in a split second in our amygdala, our emotional fear centers, is this a threat or is this a challenge? And if we can override that and get slowed down enough to realize that we can actually label it a challenge, the brain kind of pauses a little bit and it's not as reactive. The second determination the amygdala is making is can I handle this? Do I have the resources to manage it? So by saying this mantra, this is a challenge, I have the resources to manage, you're actually calming down these very old parts of the brain that are really, really, really reactive and ready to get all hyped up and dump all sorts of stress hormones through our adrenal system because the minute it's a threat and we don't have the resources to manage it, then the system is out of control. So why this is important is these consequences of the brain. And so we are all coping with stress all the time and our coping skills can either be positive or negative, proactive or passive. And when we are proactive and we manage stressors head on and we are good assertive communicators, chances are a lot of our stress can, can actually go down quite a bit. What happens during the survival response of a stress experience is, is really meant to be this kind of split second at the most a few minutes and then return to baseline. And so when we stay in that space, people are very likely to get things like cortisol related disorders, like adrenal fatigue. They are more likely to get type two diabetes because their blood sugar is always high because they're ready to go. They can have cardiac issues, blood pressure issues, and all these problems lead to an increased risk for dementia. So when 
the stress is constant and we are constantly exposed to these stress hormones, it feels like we're overwhelmed, we're irritable, resentful, trouble sleeping, chronic pain, fatigued. And you probably know that and you can feel that. But what you might not know is some of this neurological stuff I wanna tell you about tonight. So in the short term, when we are stressed, it really does make it so we're not seeing the big picture. Our information processing becomes very narrow and that's because we have a limited attention span because there's these kind of tapes or loops in our brain that are monitoring the stressor. So if you think about the thing that caused someone to be highly stressed, you know, traumatic events are interpersonal, they can be related to a natural disaster, it can be financial, whatever it is, the brain tends to become very hypervigilant about that topic because there was a threat there before. So a lot of the resources in the brain, even when it's unconscious, can become very focused. So many of my patients have interpersonal trauma histories and they become very hypervigilant about their relationships and issues of trust and betrayal and support. And you don't realize how much that can actually consume like your cognitive bandwidth. So in the short term, it really, really makes it difficult to have full cognitive ability. And people often experience this, like I have a bad memory, when really the problem is you're not really fully paying attention in the first place. In the long term, where we really see that dendritic injury to the neurons is in two parts of the brain. The prefrontal cortex, where we do a lot of our highest level executive functions like planning, organizing, multitasking, and the hippocampus. The hippocampus actually has more stress hormone receptors than anywhere in the brain. Again, probably a push from evolution to be able to remember the bad things, to learn from them so it doesn't happen again, we don't die. You could also think of cortisol in the brain as really creating premature brain aging. So you might see someone in their 60s who's had an extremely stressful life, a lot of traumatic stress, and their brain actually looks like somebody in their 80s and 90s. Chronic stress is a risk factor for dementia that's really just starting to be explored. We know that PTSD, for example, post-traumatic stress, can predict vascular dementia because of the changes, just all of that readiness all the time. When we follow a cohort of veterans, we can see they're much more likely to develop blood pressure, heart attacks, diabetes, and vascular dementia. We haven't really gotten to the point where we've done this work in the other subtypes of dementia, but what I can tell you is it's really bad. And if you count yourself as someone who is chronically stressed, this really needs to be one of your priorities. And again, what happens in our middle age oftentimes then winds up manifesting as we get older and we have these other risks for dementia like just aging. So one of the biggest things I can tell you in addition to this mantra of this is a challenge I have the resources to react to is to try to get out of a reactive mode and sit back a little bit more and wait to respond. Now what happens when we're chronically stressed is not only does the body get hijacked but really our mind gets hijacked as well. And a lot of our brain energy, our brain power, our blood flow, our electrical stimulation goes to that core of the brain in the amygdala, the threat detector, because it wants rapid ability to make determinations about, should I act, should I not? How big of a threat is this? Should I run, should I fight, should I freeze, should I fall on? There's all sorts of very quick decisions and that takes blood flow away from the prefrontal lobe. So if you're trying to reason or negotiate your way out of a stressor and you're actively stressed, it's really, really, really not a good idea. But it's what we are compelled to do because we feel like action is the thing that we need to do. It makes us feel more in control. It makes us feel like we're safer, we're protecting ourselves. But in terms of long-term effects of stress, we usually make things worse, right? We say things we don't wanna say, it's literally that our front lobes, frontal lobes are really not connected. But the other thing is you don't want to take it too far and become an ostrich and give in to the, the, the most tempting coping mechanism, I think, is avoidance, which is, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I'm going to cut the person off. I'm not going to deal with it. This really leads to more anxiety and stress in the long term and specifically intrusive thoughts. So the more you push it away, 
the more it seems to pop back in in ways that we then can't control. So we need to do a better job of teaching people how to sit with uncomfortability, how to process things in a little bit more of a detached way, but not too detached. Um, and, and really what I have found is the skills of assertiveness go a long way in reducing especially interpersonal stress. So this is defined as the direct and honest, appropriate ways of standing up for your rights while respecting the rights of others. Because if we go too passive, it's like you can step all over me. Inevitably, we wind up aggressive because nobody wants to be walked on. And then I wind up stepping on you. So in the middle, we're trying to be assertive where both people are protected. The other thing that's really important about stress management is stress prevention. So you're much more likely to be stressed if you are sleep deprived, if you haven't moved your body, if you're focusing on the negative and not practicing gratitude, if you're socially isolated. A lot of times the buffer of self-care is really what helps us manage stress because stressors happen life is unfortunately very stressful right now everything that's happening in the news and humanitarian crises everywhere especially if you're a sensitive person um, it's it's really important to make sure you step away from the news retreat into nature Remind yourself to always get back to the basics of hydration, movement, communication with people that support you and love you, and try not to take the weight of the world on your shoulders. That is uh, easier said than done, but if you can do that, your brain health now and in the future will thank you. So thank you guys so much and tune in for the next one, Brain Health Secrets. Take care, bye. Mm -hmm.